This is another 6 player fixed card play friends game. The blue and yellow players are beginners, and the purple, black and orange players are grandmasters. And with me being the red player I think that's a nice opportunity for me to go for South America. As long as nobody invades it, I should successfully hold it getting 2 extra troops per turn. The purple player offered me an alliance request, so I think I should be good when it comes to him, and because of that I decided to leave more troops on the left side border, so there would be fewer chances for the black player to potentially invade me. And with all of the players sending me the alliance requests except black, I think the black player is the only one potential worry as of now. So let's see where is he going to add his troops to. And alright, he's sent me an alliance request also, adding his troops to somewhere else but not next to my border. And with that the situation looks very promising for me. I'm allied with everyone, so I know that nobody is going to target me, at least not in the beginning of the game. And with me being the player who got a continent first, the situation looks very good for me. I mean I would be surprised if I were the one to get eliminated first. The yellow player decided to go for North America, and that isn't something I like being the South American player who got a continent early, as I'm looking for potential opportunities to expand, and with that actually I was kinda planning to expand into North America myself with Africa not really being a choice with the purple player going for it. But I mean it should take a while until the yellow player gets North America and he might even end up weakening himself too much, which might lead me of taking North America from him, but in case he captures North America soon without losing too many of the troops, and stays looking strong, then I will just stay being in the alliance with him. So as of now I do not have any fixed plans yet, I'm just going to see how the situation is going to look in overall. I'm going to see which players are strong, and which players are weak, and then who do they want to attack. And with the purple player being another player who got a continent early, I think he is going to be my best ally, as it's just probably the best to team up with someone else strong and take over the advantage over the players who don't have any continents. And probably to fight each other would be the worst, as we would just both ruin our advantageous position, might even becoming the players who have the least chances to win. Though I'm not sure if the purple player trusts me much, as he guards the border against me the strongest, and even wanted to fortify some more troops, so that potentially indicates that he is either afraid of me, or wants to attack me, but maybe not necessarily, we are going to see what he is going to do in his next turns. The blue player told me to attack yellow, probably indicating to crush my four troops into the yellow player's army in Australia but with the orange player sneaking into Australia himself while crushing these yellow's troops, I do not have to crush the yellow player's troops anymore by myself, so that's really fortunate, because with the yellow player being my ally, I didn't really want to do it, though now the blue player wants me to attack orange. But myself I do not really want to attack anyone, well maybe except yellow in North America for the already mentioned reasons. But when it comes to orange and blue, I do not want to attack or weaken any of them, as I mean I already have two strong allies with the strong positions who are purple and black, and they are enough for me to end up in a 3 player situation, so it's just probably the best to let the blue and orange players to fight it out, so they would simply be both eliminated from the game easier. And with the blue player manual rolling the orange player, I think it's gonna be it, so then we will just additionally have to eliminate the yellow player though the purple and black players seem to be in a very strong alliance, and ideally I would like to end up in a 3 player situation with a player who would be mostly only loyal to me. Though I'm not sure if that's really possible, so I think the 3 player endgame with the purple and black players is going to be it. So unless both of them suddenly and surprisingly turn on me. The black player wants me to attack yellow, and I think yeah. Now I should be confident on attacking the yellow player, before I wanted to gain some more troops to gain a stronger position for myself, rather than to start instantly weakening someone and potentially risking of ruining the position for myself. But I think now with me attacking yellow, he shouldn't be able to retaliate, I think he will just be set up to be taken out, 
and with being eliminated from the game before he makes his next turn, I think there's no retaliation risk. And to be honest if I trade in a set, then I could potentially try taking the yellow player out by myself for his 4 juicy cards, rather than setting him up for someone else. So let's just see what kind of the blitz rolls I'm going to get. And oh wow, this one sucks a lot. So I think I just have to back out, as otherwise if I continue and fail, then I could just be simply eliminated along with yellow. So my plan to take the yellow player out, didn't work out at all, as in fact I probably made myself to be the most suitable target to be eliminated next. So let's hope that the black player tries and fails also. As otherwise I might not even end up in a 3 player situation at all. And actually I really like a lot that the black player ended up being weakened that much without taking the yellow player out, even with him crushing the 5 troops of mine, as I think now he looks very vulnerable for sure. And with the orange player taking the yellow player out, I think I should encourage orange to attack black, as I think it's either him or me, as with the purple player being the player whose turn next and with him trading in a set, not much purpose for the orange player to attack him so unless he would risk of completely trying to take him out. And alright, I think the orange player's move to invade black has potentially saved my life. And I mean it was probably the best for the orange player to consider weakening one of us even without my encouragement anyway, as if he had just ended up turtling in Australia, then we would have been able to trap him into it. So then he might have been the one to get eliminated next, but I mean that would have been possible that the purple and black players would have just ganged up on me instead as well, as I mean with them being the African and European players and sharing a lot of borders with each other. Probably it wouldn't have been smart for one of them to start targeting another one. But with the orange player invading and weakening black, it made the black player to be a very suitable target for the purple player to eliminate with the purple player guaranteeing himself to end up being in a 3 player situation. And I think I'm actually very glad the black player was eliminated, as it seemed that the black and purple players had a very strong alliance. But with the black player being eliminated there are two opponents left who feel sympathy for me and who are both trying to bring me on their side to help them out to attack each other. But I cannot team up with purple, as then obviously he would become too strong and win the game. And while I technically could help out the orange player to attack purple, I do not really want, I wouldn't really like to end up doing the dirty work for him when he has more troops than me, so what I wanted is to only start attacking purple when the orange player gets to my troops level. But with the orange player stopping to invade the purple player, I think now I'm just forced to invade him. As otherwise if nobody invades the purple player for another turn, then I think he will just simply win. The good thing is that the purple player's armies are blocked, as otherwise he might have considered taking me out instead of manual rolling orange, or even considering taking the orange player out himself as well. So I'm sorry purple but I think I'm just forced to invade you. As otherwise if I let you hold those continents while capturing both of the Americas for myself and fortifying my troops to either Alaska or Kamchatka, then I think you could just simply consider to immediately betray me, and making it very hard if not impossibly for me or Orange to invade you back. So to take such a big risk wasn't something I wanted, in fact I think I would have given away the game for you. As looking to the troops counter now, even without holding the continents you still have slightly more troops than me and Orange combined. So that was very unfortunate that with your armies being blocked, you couldn't have taken any one of us out, and with us trading in sets, the situation should be balanced once again. Now I'm thinking of ways of what would be the best to do towards ending up being more neutral but without staying too passive. What I mean is what I should do to not end up pissing both of the players off too much. If I strongly attack purple, then the purple player will be strongly annoyed with me, but if I do not attack purple, just like ending up of capturing one territory of him, then the orange player will be mad on me that I'm not helping him out to deal with the strongest player. All in all we shouldn't let the purple player become way stronger than us and take over the advantage, but the thing is that the purple player is much more focused on me now over orange. 
N with the purple player sending me an attack request to attack orange just before starting his turn, I would have wanted to send him thumbs up, but then I realized that I would have been the one who has to invade him, so I didn't want to. As with me not invading purple, the orange player wouldn't have invaded him either, especially if I had fortified my biggest army in Alaska clearly showing that I'm in the purple player's side, and then who knows how strong the purple player would have gotten. I mean the orange player might have not been able to invade the purple player even if wanting if with the purple player properly guarding both of the borders, and then it would have been a big risk that the purple player would have immediately betrayed me invading me into my continents. But then with the purple player not ending up capturing Africa with Europe, and with another turn coming, it was the time to send thumbs up for the purple player and capture both of the Americas, as with me getting big continents firstly. There was no risk of him becoming too strong if holding these continents after me receiving the big troop bonus firstly. I think there's no way the balance of the game is broken even if the purple player decides to invade me. And with that I'm happy to try out doing the Australian trap strategy with him on orange to see how it works out. As one thing the orange player's army is only accessible towards his borders now, and then another thing is that with the purple player being stronger than me, he will have to start weakening the orange player first to make it mutually beneficial for me. But alright, the orange player straightly invades purple, and let's see if he invades me as well. He didn't, and with that I think it's the best case scenario which could have happened for me. So now let's see if the purple player betrays me. He didn't as well, focusing on attacking orange. And with that, with me receiving those continental troops plus trading in a set, I think I could potentially bring myself into the advantageous two-player endgame with the purple player by taking the orange player out for his four cards. Unfortunately that's a bad blitz roll I've got, I lost three troops more taking down quite smaller army while I was supposed to get the attacker's advantage, so what I see is that the luck doesn't really favor me this game, especially when remembering the time when I tried taking the yellow player out. But even with a bad luck I think I should win. I think I will just force the purple player to crush my army so he would capture fewer territories and with that I would receive higher territorial troop bonus. But oh no, he lost even 6 troops fewer from that blitz roll, so the terrible luck continues happening for me. And with that, guess what, even with me having 4 cards, I have the worst set possible. Well, either way I think I'm just forced to trade it in, I think it's the best to maximize my potential chances to win. Obviously I have to invade him into both of his continents, and then focus on capturing as many territories as possible. Unfortunately I lost 3 versus 1 blitz roll in South America, and then to try capturing 2 more territories with the 3 troops in Australia in order to bring him 1 troop fewer probably wouldn't have been that much of a great idea. And not necessarily because of quite likely failing, but because it might have created an opportunity for the purple player to go for Australia as well, which is much more harder to invade with it having only one border while South America has even two of them. The purple player successfully invades me into Africa, but luckily enough I still have the territorial advantage. Though the bad thing is that the purple player is one card ahead and with him trading an A set before me, that might flip the situation around. Luckily enough he only has A6 troop set, and what I see is that I have a wild card which guarantees me to trade in a 10 troop set with my current cards. My priority is to make sure to invade the purple player into his captured continents with the secondary priority being to capturing a bunch of territories, but mostly focusing on the ones which would let me to capture the most of continents, so the purple player might end up failing to invade at least one of them. And alright, with the purple player seeing that he is a completely losing situation, he shows a good sportsmanship to surrender, so nobody of us would waste our time 